Welcome to Pure Experiences. Once you have chosen a goal, you need to find a way to reach that goal. That means that takes you to your life goal is called a path. It is a systematic plan that will take you to your goal. The choice of the path depends upon your goals. So you can choose from a variety of paths depending on the needs of the seekers. Masters have created a number of paths, a number of ways. So it can be difficult to choose because there is so much choice. It will be difficult to list all the paths that exist in this world. But for the purpose of study and understanding, we can divide the paths into eight categories. Out of these eight, the first six are spiritual in nature and the remaining two are not. You can mostly fit any path that you find into one of these categories. Not everybody is at the same level of evolution and everybody is unique with different needs and therefore we have so many paths. The thumb rule is choose the highest path first and if you fail, take something which is lower. There can be many opinions about what is the highest path, what is the best path but ultimately the path that makes you progress takes you to your goal will be the best for you. If a path is higher or the most sophisticated but it fails to take you to your goal then it is useless. So with some experimentation you can arrive at the correct path or of course you can consult your guide. Even before you can choose you should know what a path does, what are its characteristics, specialties and so we are going to Go through all these eight kinds and I'll give you an overview of them. Ultimately, you will need to choose it yourself. And fortunately, we have created an app to help you to choose a path. And the link will be given in the description of the video. But the choice is always yours. The first category of paths is the path of knowledge. This is the highest kind of path that exists in this universe. The path of knowledge is the direct path and is the fastest path provided your goal is self-realization. The path of knowledge takes many forms and is suitable for seekers who are very intelligent, very rational, logical and have a good command over their minds who have a critical thinking ability and logical ability. Sometimes your seeking will last only one day. It is so fast. Then comes the next category of discipline. These kinds of paths involve control of the mind or disciplining the body-mind using various practices. The goal of these kinds of paths is union or a state of samadhi and there are many kinds in this category. This is suitable for seekers who have a steady mind and also have a very strong body. If the path of knowledge fails, the path of discipline will be recommended. The next category is the path of energies which involves control of subtle energies of the body-mind. The goal of these kinds of paths is rapid evolution. This kind of path is suitable for people who have a little bit of grasp of subtle energies and who are highly sensitive. The next category is the path of action and the seeker is involved in purification and in gaining good karma, doing good deeds performing good actions. And the goal here is liberation from human birth, which is again a kind of evolution. This is suitable for people who are extroverts, very social, and who have great deal of energy, good health, and kind nature. The next category is the path of surrender, where the seeker surrenders to a higher power and is involved in worship, service, and love. The goal here is merging with the higher power and everybody is free to decide what that higher power will be. This is suitable for people who are very emotional, who have a loving and caring nature and who have a very good character. The next is the path of powers and you should have guessed. The goal here is desire fulfillment. By controlling the illusion, the seeker attains supernatural powers and this is suitable for people who have natural gifts, who are bold and fearless and who are burdened with too many desires. They want to fulfill them and move on to the higher states. 
probably this is the lowest of the spiritual paths and then we have non spiritual path of self improvement which involves improvement of the body of the mind of intelligence mastering of arts and sciences literature poetry anything which a well educated and cultured person can achieve the goal here is to become a better person and this is suitable for people who wish to improve themselves who wish to excel and win in the world and the last is the path of common man probably there is no good name for it you can say it is a worldly path or you can say materialistic path the belief here is that i am the body the whole world is real and matter is the only truth the goal here is survival and enjoying this life which is when and the only play of matter which happens only once if you are not suitable for any of the above then this is the only path this is the path that the majority takes it is the default path for any person under all these categories there are various sub categories various kinds of traditions etc etc and it is slightly difficult for any seeker to decide which path to take as usual help is available experiment if you already know what is your goal you will surely find the best path to achieve that goal otherwise you can take any path that you like most that you resonate with ultimately you will know only by walking on that path you will need to test and wherever you progress is your path if you have a guide you can ask for your evaluation and a recommendation the goal decides the path so it should not be difficult anyhow if there is no guide you can either use the app that i mentioned or you can do your own self evaluation find out your level of progress find out your capabilities and choose accordingly ultimately that which you like most and that which leads you to your goal is your path ultimately everybody needs to take up the path of knowledge because according to our definition of spirituality that is the only path that gives you self realization it is the last path there is no seeking after that and all other paths are ways to reach the path of knowledge so any intelligent person will first start from the path of knowledge and will take up something else only if they do not succeed on that path if you are successful on the path of knowledge there is no need of any other path there is no need of seeking or walking on any path because you have reached the final goal the highest goal in spirituality so here i am showing you the suitability of the paths depending on a person's intelligence body emotions and number of desires although remember that this is merely an opinion your experience will tell you the reality you can choose the path start walking on it but it is next to impossible to progress on any path without a guide you won't be able to take even one step on any path without a guide and if you try you will surely get lost because for a newcomer this is totally unknown territory simply knowing the name of the path does not mean that you become capable of walking on that path you need somebody to hold your hand to show you the direction the guide can not only show you the right path the guide can guide you on that path so the guide is a person a teacher a guru a mentor an assistant a friend who guides you on your path the meaning of the word guru is the one who takes you from darkness to light it can be anybody but usually a living human being is the most preferred embodiment of a guru that person is called a guru person who is simply an instrument of the guru field now what is a guru field what is the real meaning of a guru we are going to discuss these topics later in this series right now you should understand that without a guru without a guide it will not be possible to reach your goals who is your guide anybody who has reached the same goal as your own the goals must match a guide is the one who can guide you to reach to that goal the goals should match the path should match and the personalities also should match the guide is the one whom you like most because there can be so many you pick the one whom you like most 
that will make your journey enjoyable and comfortable pick the one whom you understand easily and the one whom you trust know and respect if these qualities are absent from the guide if there is no match between the seeker and the guru the progress will be slow probably there won't be any progress so you can uh, guess that choosing a guide is a really sensitive issue and you should not hurry a guide is the one who teaches you how to walk on the path and as you progress you will see that the teachings are turning out to be true according to your own experience if this is not happening probably you have a wrong guide or probably you are on a wrong path the match has not happened these days many guides or gurus have made it their business to guide and they have hundreds of students so always pick somebody who has enough time for you whom you can communicate with easily who can pay personal attention to you if you find yourself in a crowd of 1000 people who are trying to reach an unreachable guru probably you got the wrong guide there are some additional qualities that you should look for but they are not really essential qualities the first is that your guide should be a good scholar he should know the most important books and scriptures should have a good idea about what the books are saying or what other great masters are saying the guide should serve selflessly should be non commercial in nature because of practical reasons arrangement of stay or travel or simply for arranging the bread and butter some teachers or guides will charge some fee which is okay from practical point of view but if it is too much then probably you need to find somebody else the teacher should be ethical should have good moral values should be loving compassionate and kind and most importantly should be able to express the teachings accurately and in a interesting manner he should be a good orator he should talk clearly straightforward no mysterious mumbo jumbo but ultimately your guide will be a compromise and uh, the guide also has some criteria to decide whom they will accept as their student so it must work both ways it is more or less like a romantic relationship it is not a completely logical process emotions and human angles are involved here and you may need to experiment here also try a few of them see who is suitable how many will you need that totally depends on your progress your success on the path you can drop the ones with whom you are not achieving anything and you can pick new ones get as many guides as you need there is no rule that you will stick with one guide for the rest of your life that is possible but that will be rare it is not a marriage it is an affair which should last only till you reach your goal and the guide is only a means to reach there being with the guide should not become your life goal just like we have different paths we'll have different kinds of guides depending on the path you can classify the guides also sometimes they guide on different paths also and the scriptures have mentioned seven different kinds of guides or gurus which is probably not relevant these days but you can research on it in the modern times we can find five major categories of guides they are the guides that teach you basic survival which includes your school teacher university teacher professors even your parents they teach you to survive in the society and basic values basic manners the second category of guides is those who teach you arts and sciences which is something more than merely survival like your music teacher your drawing teacher etc and these two form the worldly kind of teachers for the spiritual kind we have a category of popular teachers popular guides their mission is to spread awareness about spirituality in the masses and these are the kinds that appear on the tv that write hundreds of books that go a little bit into spirituality but are mostly shallow not that deep and these kinds are surrounded by thousands and millions of people they can be a good starting point but usually they are so busy 
they are like celebrities they don't have time to teach you personally but still you can learn a lot from these popular gurus in the next category is the occult guru and you must have guessed they teach something which is not readily available in your schools and colleges and also from the popular gurus but their goal is not self realization or evolution or progress that much their goal is enabling a better survival through the use of occult powers and these are very difficult to find and most of newcomers they are after these kinds of gurus who can do some kind of miracle who can show them the circus of miracles and ordinary people common man on the street calls them gurus or babas because in the mind of a common man a guru is the one who can do miracles who knows secret knowledge occult knowledge so a newcomer generally falls into the trap of these gurus and you can guess it here that there are many fakes here they will exploit the newcomers they will take advantage of the gullible people and they pretend to have the powers they know some magic tricks and they spread magical stories about themselves to attract more crowd i'm not saying all of them are fake but those who are real they rarely teach they pick their students very carefully and they are not generally available you cannot approach them they don't have a name they don't have an address still if you are lucky you can find somebody who is an occult guru but i have seen that this is the entry point for newcomers in the field of spirituality so there is some importance but the most useful kind of guru or guide is called a true guru or sadguru which means the guide who takes you to your final goal to your life goal who gives you self realization who unites you with the universe who takes you to your highest potential this is the definition of a true guru and they are rarest very difficult to find they usually do not make any students usually they are not commercial usually they do not write many books usually they are not so popular but those who are seeking they find them or you can say those who are ready the true gurus find these students so who is a true guru ideal guru for you a guide who takes you to your own self a true guru does not make students he creates another guru so very few people know these things hopefully it will be useful for you if you have a guru who is taking you round and round you are reaching nowhere probably you need to find a true guru so the real question is how to find a guide and uh, as usual this question is asked so many times that i made an app for it and i'll link it to that also in the description of the video it is simply a quiz that informs you about the guide it will not give you a name and address of the guide obviously you will need to search it yourself the first requirement is you should have a clear goal if you do not have a goal where are you going who will guide you to what and then secondly you should pick the right path even if you have a guide but he does not know anything about the path you are on cannot guide you thirdly probably there are guides around you but they all rejected you because you are not ready because you have not prepared yourself just like i gave you some criteria to to choose the guide the guide or the guru also has some criteria to choose a student and the app i, I mentioned will be of some help to prepare you it will tell you what the gurus expect from a newcomer as i said most of the guide they do not advertise themselves they are not like film stars except the popular ones and the popular ones are of limited use so you will need to seek a guide you will need to read the available books written by these people you will need to go and meet them personally talk to them email them message them these are the modern days listen to them everybody is on youtube these days contact and see if the match happens if you are living a worldly life segregated from uh, wise people from the people who are in the field of spirituality then probably you will never come to know the names of these guides 
and probably you will never have any spiritual ambition so it is necessary to be in the company of wise people not in the company of stupid or purely materialistic people be in the company of other seekers especially who are on the same path if not join any groups of seekers mix with them mingle with them ask around educate yourself if you be with them you will become like them you will come to know all the secret gurus you will come to know all the great books remember this information is absent from your society it's not so easily available so being in a group where you get to meet or contact other seekers other guides other wise people is very good you will learn from their experience you will learn from their combined wisdom that will shorten the time to find a correct guide and that will take you to your goals faster all these actions prepare you for meeting with the guide once you're ready you will see that the guide is present in front of you the guru finds the student the students cannot find a guru they can only prepare themselves and finding the right guide will be the greatest event of your life because it guarantees that you are only a few steps away from your goal this is how important a guide is probably the most important thing to do right now is to search for a guru your guide that is the key that will open all the locks if you like somebody if you know somebody then there is a method to apply for studentship you cannot simply hand over the money and buy the services of the guides probably this is already happening and they are not the right kind of people they have commercialized spirituality so this is probably a good way to know who is a real guru who is a real guide even if they are commercial the first sign is the guide will not accept you directly simply because you paid some money go and meet the guide greet the guide respectfully show respect as per the traditions of that guide or the guru always tell why you are there the guide is not interested in your name your family the high post you are in the money you are earning your beauty or your position in the society the guide is interested in what are you looking for so the first thing you should tell is your spiritual goal if you have any and then politely request for guidance this sounds like common sense but i have seen so few people know about this basic manner they do not have the minimal manners to request for guidance they can be forgiven because they are newcomers but then their chances of being accepted are not that much so remember these things there is a process of application if the guide is interested probably they will ask you some questions for example what did you do so far who was your previous guru what practices have you done sometimes they will ask for uh, what problems are you facing what is your situation in the family in the society what issues are you going through sometimes they will ask these things and you should reply honestly do not make up stories to impress the guide because ultimately they will come to know and that will terminate your relationship so never hide anything from the guide remember they are not interested in the person that you are they are simply assessing the suitability for being guided and if they reject you if they say that i'm sorry i cannot guide you because of these these reasons you should find somebody else because if by hook or crook you get into their institute or ashram or program it will be waste of time because you will fail if accepted you should listen carefully to the instructions and accept the guidance that is given generally it is not much initially sometimes it is like okay come from tomorrow okay meet me there or okay go to this place somebody will teach you something do not expect the knowledge of the whole universe on first day in few minutes that will never happen sometimes the seekers will be tested and these tests can go on for many years sometimes although nowadays nobody has that kind of time so you will know more about the peculiarities of guides and paths as you get more experience in this field and you must have guessed that it is not so straight forward you will learn by experience newcomers do not have this kind of experience 
and they make many mistakes especially for choosing the path and for choosing the guide and applying for studentship to a guide so what not to do when you are trying to learn from somebody do not start teaching your guru or your guide do not try to impress that person by telling how much you know you should be completely empty you should say i don't know anything even if you read things here and there that does not make you a seeker that does not make you smart you remain stupid accept your ignorance reveal your ignorance do not reveal your knowledge you don't have any knowledge at this stage some guides will ask for money they have a fees but that does not give you any right to demand the teachings sometimes you will not get any teachings no matter what you pay do not demand anything your job is to take instructions do not argue with the guide do not say you are wrong i am right nobody will teach these kind of people when you are in front of your guide do not talk too much simply listen because the time that you get with the guide is most valuable do not waste your time in talking too much let the guide talk and you simply listen take the instructions follow the instructions progress on your path always be ready to receive that will be called the receiving posture not fighting not teaching not arguing not demanding not manipulating simply receiving receive whatever is given do not lie to your guide do not try to deceive your guide and do not hide your shortcomings bad qualities whatever you have because ultimately in the guru comes to know that will be the most intimate bond that you will have with anybody if that relationship is a success and that can end your spiritual career if it is found that you lied when you meet the guide do not try to test the guide remember you are the student you cannot test somebody from whom you are going to learn if you try to test the guide if you ask questions demand answers then it is almost guaranteed that you will be kicked out that simply shows that you are not here to learn that simply shows that you do not trust there is no love there is no respect so how will you know if that guide is right for me the only way to know is through teachings take the teachings implement the teachings if the teachings work he is a good guide the test happens not before but after you have already become a student if you are not progressing if you are not learning anything if the guide is not paying any attention to you well the test failed now you are free to leave don't waste your time there and many people have a strange image of guides in their minds that they will solve their worldly matters they will solve their family problems financial issues and they go to the guru and start asking about these things never do that and do not expect any kind of miracle there as i said spirituality is not miracles getting the guide is the biggest miracle in your life if you want to see miracles best to go to a circus or a dog and pony show there is no need to go to a guide many newcomers they fall into these pits and then there is no chance in their lives to get a guide because they come back bitter failed with a negative image of spirituality and gurus in their mind and they do not try again so remember before taking the lesson this is your first lesson these are your first steps even before you take your first step on a spiritual path